Hey, good afternoon, Provi. Good afternoon. DJ, we still don't have quorum yet. OK. Yeah, so let you know when that happens. And we may not have it today because today I got two emails from commissioners saying that they can't make it. OK, yeah, not a problem. See. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. Well, we'll take some time to see if any commissioners will be able to to join us. OK. Hi, Provi. This is Les with Verizon Wireless. How are you? Fine, thank you. And you? Good, thank you, Provi. I'm just curious, where are we on the agenda? Are we a ways out yet? You're number three. And we haven't oh. started yet. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll uh, jump on in about a half an hour, 40 minutes. In. Uh, I suggest that you stay on for a little longer because we're trying to see if we're going to have quorum today. Oh, okay. Sounds good. Thanks. Sure. Peggy, TJ, Eddie, and that's all we have at the moment, right? 
Is here, Vicky's here, Eddie's here. We need two more. So Famina and Ivan pop in. We're good. Isn't that Ivan? Ah, Ivan's here. Okay, so we need one more. Okay, so we have Ivan, Vicky, DJ. Eddie, DJ. You should say, right? But he's muted. Okay. Yeah, DJ says so far we have you, we have Eddie. Um, Ivan is here and Vicky is here. We need one more person for quorum. Okay, understood. Um, which commissioners are not able to make it today? Um, Chris and Shane. Okay, got it. Thank you. That's from mobile. Can I go sticky note? Sorry. TJ, we're going to make a call to one or two commissioners and see what's keeping them. OK, understood. Thank you. Sure. OK, thanks. Thank you. Um, what I recommend, DJ, is if for some reason we don't have quorum, then perhaps we don't hear the request for certificates of appropriateness and maybe we go on to other portions of the agenda today and take care of some of that stuff. How does that sound? Yeah, that sounds good to me. As long as we can make that work, I have no problem with it. Yeah, because I don't know that quorum is needed to just review some of those items like the Section 106 review and things like that. Okay, okay. sounds good. All right. So we're calling one or two more commissioners and give us just a few more minutes and we'll see. Okay. Okay. This is Russ. As long as there's no action on the item, um, it doesn't need to be quorum. Okay. All right. Let's see. That's so we true. can listen to them. So we can't make a motion that I'm accepting the minutes or anything like that. We can just review them and say we can table it for next week or next time. Okay. All right. Thanks, Russ.
No answer. No. Mm -hmm. Voice now. Okay. Um, could you hear me? Sure. There we go. Hey, Provi, quick question. Yeah. What do you say we start with item number eight if we, if no, no other commissioners join us by 410? Well, it's 409 right now. Fine. I think that would be okay. Yeah. Okay. Actually, can we extend it a little bit more and say, like, I don't know, 412 or 413? Yeah. Okay. That sounds good. Let's okay. do uh, 413. Okay. And then we can go from there. And then if any commissioners come in while we're discussing items eight, nine, or 10, then we can go back to item number one. Does that sound good? That sounds good to me. Okay. All right, great. Paulina. Okay. Cool. Okay, DJ, looks like we have five. So it's you, right, Vicky, excellent. Eddie, Ivan, Paulina. We're waiting okay. for one more, but we can get started. Okay, sounds good. Well, since we have a quorum and everybody's here, let's get this meeting going. So um, good afternoon, Provi. Good afternoon. So before we dive into item number one, are there any changes to the agenda? No, there aren't. Okay. Or any um, public comment to know about? No. Okay. All right. Well, let's dig in. Let's start with okay. item number one, okay. or with your um, your preamble beforehand. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Can I just make this bigger? Okay. Good afternoon, commissioners. Okay. Um, this is a statement from the Historic Preservation Office. This is a reminder that this is an official meeting of the City of El Paso's Historic Landmark Commission. We ask and expect that all attendees are courteous and respectful to each other to ensure a professional meeting. An excessive display of uncivil behavior or being disruptive may require for an individual to be removed from the meeting. And from Chapter 20.20.080, certificates of appropriateness, certificates of demolition, and applications for administrative review shall be granted, granted with modifications or denied based on the following criteria. When City Council has adopted architectural and design guidelines for a particular district, those guidelines shall control, provided they are not in conflict with any other requirements of the City Code, except that the HLC may approve exceptions to the guidelines in an effort to maintain the historic integrity of an H overlay property, in which case the exception shall control in that particular case. And this is a notice to the applicants and the property owners, which means that when you come to the Historic Landmark Commission, you are asking them to basically look over an application, in some cases approve an exception to the guidelines. If that is the case, that exception is granted in this case only. 
This means that if your neighbor has a metal roof and you want a metal roof, you don't automatically get one because your neighbor has one because the HLC makes a decision in that particular case. So with that, we'll go on to the first item. Good afternoon, co commissioners. This is Mo Melendez. So first item on the agenda is 4709 Post Road. Uh, this was this is the uh, third time that we're seeing this in, in our meetings. Uh, so this is in uh, the Austin Terrace Historic District, zoned R4H, uh, constructed in uh, 1949 and is non-contributing. Certificate of appropriateness is for the installation of solar panels on the roof. Now, initially, the application was for the installation of the solar panels mostly on the uh, eastern side of the of the roof, and uh, we've been uh, going back and forth uh, between the contractor and and the owners. And uh, so far, what we have received uh, is this new plan uh, placing the panels uh, pretty much mostly on the rear and. Uh, definitely worth to say that if this was the initial uh, design that was turned in, uh, this would have been approved administratively. So here's another view just so you get an idea. And this is the installation hardware. And this is uh, the installation hardware with the uh, with the brackets. So this is the location. Once again, this is the view from the alleyway. And uh, if go back to the, oh, this was the initial location where they were requesting the uh, the installation of the panels. However, now they are uh, proposing that they be installed on the on the rear addition. So. In this case, uh, since they are now meeting uh, the guidelines, uh, we would like to recommend approval. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, it's something. Um, as Mo said, because they are finally meeting um, the guidelines that we have requested, had this been sent to us, this proposal that you see placing the panels at the back of the roof, we would approve, of, approve this administratively because this is in accordance with the guidelines. So actually we're very thrilled with this new proposal. It meets exactly what we've asked them to do from the very beginning and we hope that everyone can live with this and be happy with it. So that's our presentation. All right, excellent, thank you. Uh, do any commissioners have questions for, uh, for Mo or Provi? Hello, this is Ivan. Can we just see the brackets again to the sure. roof? This one. Okay, here we go. So that's one, and here's another. Do you know what the reason is for the standoff? Oh, just because it's a flat roof there, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Sure. All right. Excellent. Um, well, for the just for the sake of time, because we do have a, a number of other items to attend to. Do any commissioners have questions for the solar panel company on specifics of this revised design? No question. Okay, thanks, Ivan. Um, can I move that we accept it as presented without further discussion? Sure. Yeah, I second that. All right, if there are no further discussions, let's put it to a vote. Um, I'm going to go down the list and then we can just vote individually. So this is DJ and I vote yay. Vicky? Yay. Okay. Ivan? Yay. Okay. Um, is Francisco on the line or no? I don't no. think so. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. In that case, um, Eddie? Yay. Okay. 
Thank you. And Paulina. Yay. OK, great. All right, great. The motion passes. Thank you again for doing this work. As Provi said, um, this is a really great um, development of the, the initial design. So thank you again for continuing to work on this and to- Very briefly, TJ, sorry about this, but did you have someone second the motion? Did I hear? Yeah, I seconded it. You seconded it, okay. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, thank you again for putting all the extra work into this. Um, it looks really great and we're really looking forward to seeing how it turns out. Okay, Ms. Cruz, if you're on the line, this means that your um, latest design is passed and we're going to get, go ahead and approve it. So if you like, contact me tomorrow. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, great. Well, that's good to see. Um, let's move on to item number two. Okay. Item number two is a certificate appropriateness for 3017 Grant Avenue. Uh, this is another repeat uh, from uh, last meeting. This is in the Manhattan Heights Historic District, zoned R3H, uh, built in 1913, and it is a contributing structure. And the certificate of appropriateness is for the installation of a rooftop package unit after the fact. Now, if if you all recall, uh, this this was the house where the uh, rooftop unit was placed there without permits or approvals. And uh, once they once they came over, once they came to uh, attempt to, to rectify this, they, uh, in good faith, removed the illegal structure on the side, the, uh, the carport, and the gate at the front, which had no prior approvals. So the commissioners asked that they place a mock-up on the roof uh, to show uh, as the as the uh, contractor mentioned that they could move the the unit further back and use an elbow. So uh, we didn't receive a mock-up, uh, but this is uh, what they sent us. So this proposal is to move the existing unit 18 feet back. So. Uh, Really, this is this is pretty much the only thing that we've received. Uh, and if if you all have any further questions, uh, I think the contractors are here. Yes, we are. OK. So we'll go ahead and give you a few Can minutes to. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, so commissioners will will give you a few seconds to to look this over. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for providing us with this informal schematic of where the HVAC unit is proposed to be relocated to. Um, I do have one question on the patching of the roof of the existing location. Mm -hmm. So how are you, do you plan on patching the roof? Yes. Um, Mr. Tejas, is that you? Yeah, uh, okay, if you can yeah. just introduce yourself for the record. Okay, uh, this is Arturo Tejas with Comfort Zone. I am the person that prepared the drawing. As far as the packing of the roof, that's going to be done by a professional company. They're going to match the existing materials. Over. Oh, okay, so it's going to be a brown asphalt shingle to match existing? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, great. Thank you. Do any other commissioners have questions for Mr. Tejas or Provi or Mo for this project? Okay. Do any commissioners have questions or not questions? I'm sorry. Um, comments or anything else to provide input? Mm -hmm. 
Okay. If there's nothing, then I would like to make a motion to approve the relocation of the HVAC unit as noted in the schematic drawings provided to the Historic Preservation Office and shown to the HLC on today's meeting during February 22nd. I second. Okay, thank you, Vicki. All right, this is DJ and I vote yay. Vicki? Yay. Thank you. Ivan? Yay. Okay, Eddie? Yay. Okay, and Paulina? Yay. Okay, great. Uh, DJ, Mr. Macias has joined us, so you can ask him. Oh, great. Uh, Francisco, do you, would you like to vote on this item? I vote yay. Okay, excellent, thank you. Sorry for missing your name. No, no, no. Don't worry about it. We okay. All right, thanks. Okay, well, the mo motion passes. So thank you again for providing this drawing and um, look You're forward to seeing well. the work. Yeah, thank you thank very you. much. All right. Thank you. Have a good evening. You too. Bye-bye. Thanks. All right, commissioners. The next item, item number three is a reconsideration of an approved certificate of appropriateness for construction of a cell tower. You did see this item, I believe it was back in January, and it's for the cell tower located at 9100 Alameda Avenue in the Isleta Historic District. It's a non-contributing property. It was constructed in 1950 and zoned C1H, which is commercial historic. Um, you may remember this property because it's literally just down the block from the mission. Um, this is the parcel this is the structure that's on the parcel. And the proposal was for a cell tower in the middle of the lot. Actually, Provi, I'm sorry to interrupt, but yeah. the um, the presentation, yeah, yeah, the presentation is, is something else. What? Yeah. I had mine up, Provi. I'm sorry. Let me go, let me unshare so that you can do yours. Oh, oh thanks, Ann. <laughs> sorry, I was I was jumping the gun there. That's right. No, thank okay. you. I kept wondering, God, how did I screw this one up again? <laughs> thank that you. Thanks. Okay. We're almost there, Ed. And actually, I have your presentation in this presentation, Ann, so you might not have to share anything. Okay. So we did it for you. Okay. So basically, this was the original proposal. <clears throat> you may remember this tower. Okay. Um, actually, So you may remember this rendering, okay? The tower is going to be 55 feet tall. It'll be in the center of the parking lot, more or less. And it, the proposal was to cover it up so that it looked like it was less of a tower and less of a cell tower and something a little more in keeping with the district. Now, after about two HLC meetings, You may remember, sorry, give me just a minute here. That at the end, the HLC wasn't really happy with this design. It was a little too much. And what you'd recommend that instead was a certificate of appropriateness for construction of a cell tower with the modifications that the cell phone tower be a monopole design with flush mount to reduce its visibility. In addition, if the tower design changes due to section 106 and NEPA process, the new design shall be brought forth to the HLC for reconsideration. In addition, the HLC recommends to contact the Sata de Sur tribe for their input and consideration on this project. So if you may remember that meeting and it was decided that maybe just having a plain cell tower was the best thing because it wouldn't detract so much from everything else around the district and would sort of fade away. But since then, um, we've had some discussions with the zoning department and the applicant and found that um, this doesn't meet zoning code, okay, which is why it's back for your reconsideration. The new proposal is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be like what you see here, this proposed antenna. Okay. Now, for full disclosure, I want to let you know that we had approved a cell tower in a historic district several years ago. I don't know if any of you were here, but it was in Austin Terrace and it was for a church that had a very similar situation. It had a very, very large lot. 
um, it had a contract with cell tower company. And the question was, well, how do you build something that fits into the district? Something very similar to this was ultimately approved. But it was at the edge of the district. So I'm going to turn this over to my coworker, um, Anne, so that she can explain to you why this has to come back and why this does not meet current codes for zoning. So Anne, if you'd like to go ahead and take it, let me know, and I will just go ahead and change the size as you need. Fantastic. All right. Good afternoon and Gayante Planning and Inspections. So this item is back before you today because cell towers are subject to supplemental regulations per El Paso City Code section uh, 2010-455. And so this code was most recently amended last year after a long and contentious discussion, uh, ultimately culminating in uh, an agreement with the industry in 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 order to reduce some of the things that they were permitted by right, we requested that uh, some more consideration be paid to the design of the towers themselves. And so the design that was ultimately approved by HLC in November does not meet uh, the new requirements as adopted. Specifically for anything over 35 feet in height in the C1 district, uh, there is a requirement that uh, the low visibility design uh, standards are met. And I'm going to go over those on the next slide. The proposed tower is, 40, is uh, 55 or uh, 60 feet, and uh, therefore it is required to meet these low visibility design standards. So as you can see, first one is that the uh, antennas, cables, and fixtures are completely enclosed, meaning that they, the antenna is in some sort of obscuring structure. It's, it, it can't be visible. And uh, one of the uh, elements on the, uh, on the previously approved design was the antenna was open and visible. Um, the second one, it's got to resemble the material, color, and texture of the buildings or other structures on the property. Um, we're going to see some examples in a minute about how else this can be accomplished. Uh, most of the examples are going to concern matching the building, but at least one of them is not. Um, and then the uh, and then lastly, that it's got to serve a function that's associated with the current use of the subject property. Next slide. So here are some uh, examples that come from the uh, the guide that was adopted with the revisions to uh, 2010 455. So the top two examples represent what's meant by enclosure. The middle two, those show how uh, cell towers can be incorporated into structures where appropriate. Um, there are other ways to achieve this resemblance. It can either be with the main structure or it can be with other appurtenances on the property as illustrated below with the function example. You'll see bottom left that the cell tower, which is the structure visible in the uh, um, the the nearmost left light pole, and you can see um, on the uh, on, uh, to the right in that same picture that there are other light towers that uh, it matches pretty close to exactly. So this is something that we would perceive as meeting these low visibility design requirements. And then again, in that in the uh, bottom right for function, you see. Uh, a, uh, a clock tower uh, cell tower. Next slide. So highlighted in the yellowish orange are the uh, the issues that we uh, that we had per Title 20 with the design that was approved. First and foremost, not in, it was not enclosed. Uh, secondly, um, it's it's not a great match for either the building or the other uh, appurtenances that are visible in the photo. Um, third, it uh, serves or performs a function that's associated with the current use of the property. I mean, it's it's a naked cell tower, so not really, but really the the chief issues that we had were concerning the other two. Next slide. So. We worked with the applicant and this shows an evolution of that discussion. So the original uh, tower that had been proposed, mm -hmm. it uh, you know has Vegas and uh, crenellation and it's enclosed on four sides. And you know, it, it's, a, it's a bit of a presence on its property. So that was the first uh, uh, 
design that had been considered and rejected by HLC. The middle was uh, what planning staff had felt might be an OK compromise, and the applicant can better speak to why that wouldn't work. But what he had reported back to us was that um, there there were some some performance and longevity issues associated with this particular design uh, before proposing this last one. Now we do have this. Uh, we did receive renderings of this in two colors. The first in this gray tone. This is to match the other appurtenances on the subject property, and then the other line, uh, one that you had seen earlier that Provi had on her slide, showed it in a beige that was that's intended to match the structure. Next slide. So again, we see with the rendering or with the uh, actual photo, with the rendering with it in the building color, and then the rendering with it in the appurtenance color. Next slide. And so with that, uh, planning and zoning staff are recommending approval of the updated design as it meets the standards of El Paso City Code 2010-455 as it pertains to cell towers proposed for the C1 district. And that concludes my presentation. Happy to answer any questions. All right, excellent. Thank you for providing us with more information on the the ordinance that dictated the new design. Um, so I really do appreciate it. Um, I do have one question in regards to the, I guess the enclosure surrounding this new tower. Um, are there any zoning zoning requirements that uh, require this specific design other than, you know, height requirements or anything like that? Is there anything restricting the material that is proposed for this enclosure on the ground? The, um, the second requirement of the low visibility design was that uh, the materials and color uh, resemble the uh, buildings and other structures present on the site. So this design in particular isn't mandated, but this is a design that meets the requirements that are mandated and also uh, takes into consideration HLC's articulated desire for this not to be an overwhelming presence on the subject property. Mm. All right, great. Well, yeah, I do really appreciate your efforts to uphold that because I think it's successful. You know, I mean, it isn't as monolithic as the requirements designed from before, so that's good. Um, okay, great. Thank you. Do any other commissioners have questions? And this is Ivan. I just want to ask uh, what the material is of the enclosure at the bottom. I mean, is it to resemble the stucco on the wall of the existing I building? will defer to the applicant. Mr. Gutierrez? Yes, can you hear me, Provi? Yes, can you please uh, state your name for the record? Yes, of course. Uh, Les Gutierrez. Um, and I represent the applicant, Verizon Wireless, as well as the property owner. And um, it's good to talk to you folks for the third time. It's like we're here again. Uh, Commissioner, the, the material, we're a little bit flexible in, but I think we sent some samples. Are you talking about the material that will be covering the antennas or the um, the wall material down below to cover the uh, equipment? I, I would ask about both. I mean, um, I was referring to the one at the ground level, um, if that would resemble the building next to it. We, we certainly can, and we're open to any suggestions you have. We could, um, we normally sometimes uh, build that in some sort of a, a, a brown block material, uh, and we could make it match the building. We could stuck with, we're flexible uh, to whatever the commission would like to see. And then the material up above that you mentioned, what, what is that? Is that the same panels that you were proposing previously? Yes, Commissioner Isaac, that was the same same material that we proposed on the uh, the first proposal on the four legged structure, and I think we sent Provi a, a sample of that material. It's a real strong material, but it allows the RF signal to uh, go out and uh, get signal out of that um, unit, but it but it also conceals the antennas. It's just, it's the same panel that we had proposed before. And I think you were going to check on, uh, Mr. Gutierrez, you were going to check on the dimensions of that panel just so that it does not look, look like a checkerboard, you know, and it actually becomes a full panel on each side. Yes, we will do that. And uh, if you want to make that as part of your um, um, ruling, 
we'll make sure that it's a smooth panel and you don't see any uh, any dimensions other than just one complete structure, no checkerboard. Yes, Ivan, can you see the sample that I'm holding up? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is what was submitted previously as a proposed cover. So you can see it's very thin. Okay. The description says ray cap stealth and it has texture on the front as well. Okay. But that's pretty much it. So this would be the back and this would be the front. Thank you, Proe. Sure. I, I wanted to add one more comment, if I may, BJ and uh, Proby. Uh, on, on this particular design, one of the um, requirements of the city is they like to see that the structure is co-locatable. And uh, for this particular structure, uh, Verizon will have its antennas up at the top level, and it'll be concealed in that three-sided uh, structure. And then um, there'll be another uh, provision for another carrier. So people won't be coming back to you again for, for another um, location or another cell site here. So th this will be a co-locatable co structure. Okay, great. Thank you for that detail. Um, that's important to note. Mr. Gutierrez, this is Commissioner Lopez again. I just wanted to ask you on the bells, you know, are those fully functional? Will they act like a shine, you know, with the wind? And if so, is it safe, you know, uh, that can you ensure that they will be placed in a manner that will not, they will not fly away with, with our weather? A uh, very good point. Uh, at this point, the bells are not functional. They're just merely cosmetic. And uh, it'll be designed so that, you know, it'll withstand any uh, elements or, or wind so that they won't fall. Uh, the bells were just an, an idea. If, if you don't like the bells, we can certainly not include them. But in talking to Anne and to Raul, that was just, that's a, a structure that we've done in the Albuquerque, New Mexico market that seemed to work. Okay. And um, we're, all, we're also open if, if the commission has some interesting design that they'd like to put on the outside of the panels, we're open to that too. But the bells are not functional. Thank you. You're welcome, Commissioner. Hi, this is this is Paulina. Um, I I actually think the idea of using the bell helps maybe conceal the a sort of antenna function of the of the structure itself. Um, and just wondering if maybe the sort of hanging or the way the bell is integrated can't be maybe a little bit more thoughtful in the way it's integrated into the structure. Um, or maybe it's one bell with a larger scale. Um, it's sort of, I, I can't really tell any detail from here, but it sort of seems like maybe they're just hanging there. And I don't know, that's a suggestion. Yeah, I think, Paulina, what you're saying is you'd like to see this become functional. Yeah, even if the even if it's a faux bell, but sort of so that it appears more of a bell tower as opposed to maybe a piece of metal with just a bell hanging off of it. Well, we're, we're certainly open to input from you, or you folks are the architects, and uh, we, we can we can design something in there that would uh, maybe meet that desire. I do have one question for Provi. Um, to your knowledge, are the bells at the East Light Admission operable? Like, do they they operate on a regular basis? You know, DJ, I've never been at the mission to hear them. I but know, considering that services are held at that church, I would imagine that bell is functional. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, I think it's a really interesting idea to, you know, reference the mission's you know bell tower by having this other bell tower nearby. Just as long as it doesn't, you know, it isn't too similar in sound. So then they're they're distinct. Um, but yeah, no, I, I do like your idea, Paulina, to make them, sorry, to make them uh, operational. 
Mr. Gutierrez, this is Ivan Lopez again. I just want to ask, um, were you able to communicate or share your designs with the Isleta del Sur Pueblo? You know, we shared the previous designs with them, uh, and we had no negative feedback from them through our consultants. This new design that was recommended by uh, uh, Raul and Anne um, about two or three weeks ago, we have not shared that with them, but it's probably pretty likely that they'll agree with it if they agreed with the two previous designs. Was this um, their physical plant, or or was this their council um, group at the Isera del Sur? Well, to be honest with you, our consulting group that did the NEPA and, Sheep and SHPO, they're the ones that approached them. And um, I, I don't have a name uh, that I can share with you right now, but I do know that they did do that, and we didn't had we did not have any negative feedback from them. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. How would you feel about three bills instead of just two? No, that is an interesting idea. Yeah, I mean, adding that. I mean, personally, I was, I mean, to 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 build off of Paulina's idea of making them a bit more, you know, thoughtfully integrated, instead of having a traditional, you know, bell-shaped bell hanging from the the underside of the tower. You know, Paulina, were you thinking of something more along the lines of like a like a wind chime type? appearance, something that's a bit more cylindrical that's hanging from the underside? Or uh, could you just elaborate up more on what you, you know, what sure. you were thinking? I guess I, and I'm just maybe I'm misreferencing, but when I've seen some mission style uh, sort of architecture, you have like maybe a kind of opening that has a more substantial uh, bell in size, right, in scale. Um, that sort of looks like, even though if it's not functioning, it looks like it might be um, sort of in a, I'm thinking like if you look, even if you look at the Isleta mission, they've got that little structure down low that's got like a, a an articulated shape that's in the mission style. And then that bell just look, even appears like a, a bigger bell. Um, and I'm just thinking about the scale of this structure. It, it feels to me like it needs um, to have a little bit more substance in terms of what the bells are doing. Oh, okay. You know, it's I interesting what, that you, yeah, go ahead. Uh, this is Eddie. So uh, I think another element that may be throwing off this, you know, mission a aesthetic is that the columns themselves are fairly slender. And, you know, when you consider in the Southwest that they were using more bulky materials like Adobe, um, and stone, the columns kind of throw you off too. So if you were to, I think limit how far the bell itself suspends from the mass at the top and then beef up the legs, you might be able to, without changing anything else, improve upon some of those aesthetics Paulina's highlighting. Maybe even throw in a cross member because they typically mm -hmm. have tim timber elements to to bridge to across a, uh, a masonry opening and hold it up. Yeah, I agree with Eddie. I see that's very interesting because um, I was thinking of something completely different. You know, I mean, the, the property this proposed tower sits on was constructed in 1950. And I saw this as more of a, a slender mid-century type um, aesthetic. And I I really appreciated that because it's a good departure from the Isleta mission itself. So it's not trying to copy anything or trying to, you know, reference the, the mission itself, but, you know, um, I guess apply more roots to the property it sits on, um, and also making a vague reference to the mission nearby, without being too genuine or too, um, I guess, verbatim with the the materials used and the dimensions used. Yeah, I think I mean the slender columns might help in terms of disguising the tower. Um, and I, I, I guess just in what Paulina had mentioned earlier, you know, I was 
trying to think maybe a panel that continues down to cover the the bells, you know, that is more of a perforated look with kind of like a maybe a graphic that the Isla del Sur Pueblo would like to see, you know, perforated with the bell inside. So it kind of resembles more of a bell tower, but maybe in a modern fashion. I, don't, I mean, I think at this point I'm just throwing out ideas, but um, I mean, I think there's a lot of merit to increasing the scale of the bell for sure. Um, so that they don't just seem like they're hanging. And so in introducing maybe some panels that have some perforation, um, maybe the bell can be hidden a little more and and the focus is more on the panels that are covering the bells. Um, I mean, that's one thought I, that came up. Man, well, it's good to, I'm glad that we're having this discussion, but it's also good to remember that this design is based on being low profile. And it's based on, you know, not being a monolithic tower. So when we start adding things to the tower, then that sort of defeats the purpose of the low visibility that it was designed to I guess, designed to convey. Which, I mean, with my opinion, I, I think this design as is, is successful. I think it's uh, a good um, redesign that doesn't replicate the initial design we saw back in November. Chairman BJ and commissioners, I'd also like your input also in terms of the coloring of the structure. Do you, you think it's preference that we would paint it some sort of a tan adobe color, or we also offered a, a grayish uh, color to match the, the, the light structures? Mm. Yeah, that's another thing we need to discuss. I mean, my, my view on this is uh, I think the tan color to match the main building works. And then the perimeter wall around the, the base of the tower would be a rubble stone to match the rubble stone walls at the perimeter of the, the property. Um, do any other commissioners have other suggestions for the, the color scheme for the tower? I mean, this is Ivan. I agree with the tan color up above. Um, makes it look more of a, like a campus feel, you know, instead of trying to contrast what's there already. Okay, great. Okay, well, I mean, if no other commissioners have ideas on that. Um, I think the only thing we need to think about now is how we're going to treat the tower itself. And if there are any proposed changes to the tower, what would they be now? Um, I mean, Paulini's idea of, you know, having a more distinct bell and operable bell. Now I I think that's a, an interesting idea. However, would there be any issues with um, any added weight, especially if it's a larger bell, you know, hanging from the yeah. tower? That's a very good point, if I may, uh, Chairman BJ, is sure. that we would probably have to do another structural analysis uh, to make sure that, that the legs would be able to support, you know, a, a real bell or a heavier bell. And uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you, in the sites that we've done in the Albuquerque, New Mexico market, uh, they're, unless they're integrated into the natural church that uses the bells on a timer and, and chime at a certain time, we've really never designed something separately uh, where the bells would actually chime. And there, there may be another issue here and that I'm thinking out loud would be this, you know, if you're going to have the chimes from the mission church, and if this one was active, you'd have to time it so it wouldn't interfere with the with the church's chimes. So 
our initial purpose was just to make it look like it was a bell tower, but it's not, not really active. Understood. Thank you. Welcome. If we can go back to uh, Anne from zoning and planning inspections, and what what were your thoughts in, as far as your department with the use of the bells? For our purposes, the bells help to establish uh, compliance with the third criteria, which is that uh, the use of the cell tower corresponds to something customarily found with uh, the use of the subject property, in this case, a church. So having it resemble or function as a bell tower gets us there. As far as the particulars of the bells, we can be very flexible in zoning. I think that that's going to be more of your guys' purview uh, in the success of the design and maintaining the character of the historic district. Thank you. Okay. So this is DJ. I do have a quick question for you, Anne. I mean, the the property this tower rests on, I believe, is a restaurant. It's it's not the mission itself. So, would that change the, the, the recommendation? The major historic contributing property is at least and this is this is this is how I under understand the situation is that the area is intended largely on those things that contribute to be uh, in compliance with the style of uh, of the mission as kind of represented and, and, and reflected uh, through what has come later. And so in our estimation and this is and I'm only really kind of speaking to uh, to the 2010 stuff. I don't want to get the muddy, the water's too muddy with the historic stuff. But um, for one thing, these elements are relatively commonplace in uh, just Southwestern mission kind of styled stuff through, you know, somewhat reflected by the by the mid century development of, of the restaurant on the property. But I, th I think that we can we can associate, you know, just because it's kind of they're kind of those those elements are kind of omnipresent in areas that are trying to establish that character. So I think that we could probably if we look pretty hard, find restaurants where you had that. And I think that we could allow it. OK, yeah, no, I'm just curious um, about that that recommendation. So thank no, you it's for, an excellent question. Yeah, for elaborating, uh, elaborating on that a little bit further. OK. Ricardo. All right, excellent. Well, thank you again. Um, do any other commissioners have last minute questions or comments? OK. If there are no additional comments, I would like to make a motion to approve the design that was proposed to us during today's HLC meeting um, with a tower that is uh, dark tan in color and it has a rubble stone perimeter wall around the base of the tower to match the adjacent rubble stone walls on the property. You probably need to add uh, without a checkerboard effect. Hmm. Well, Based on what the material, you know, sample uh, was given to, to Provion, there isn't going to be a checkerboard effect. Well, but when I blow the drawings up, I do see seams. That was, I thought that was what one of the commissioners was concerned about. They wanted a, a single surface. Yeah, so we could just add that each of the panels on each side is a single surface, like. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Hamilton oh. mentioned. Or presents as a single surface, whatever. Okay, so the amendment would be. Chairman BJ, we're good yes. with that, Chairman BJ. Okay, we're good all right, that. excellent. Thank you, thank you. So the amendment would be to um, to have the the panels at the top of the tower present as a a singular surface on all three sides. Is that capture it pretty well, Ivan? Yes, okay. and I guess before I second, Paulina, do you want to say anything else on the on the um, on the bell itself? Or are you OK? Are we all OK with the, the proposed design? Um, 
I mean, I'm not going to ask for them to, uh, you know, make the belt bigger if no one else thinks that's a good idea. However, I, I'll reserve my vote <laughs> probably <laughs> till the end. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and just full disclosure, the reason why I didn't include that is because, you know, I mean, Mr. Gutierrez did say that could lead into another structural analysis, and I, I didn't want that to prolong the, the process any further. That That's fair, DJ. This is, um, the, this is the first time I'm seeing this, so. Okay. All right. no, thanks for understanding. I don't know if we need to add something on the safety, you know, of the belts. I just think they seem very flexible, you know, and that, I mean, somehow that they I mean, ensure, you know, that this does not destabilize or. I mean, is that really our purview? I, know it's not, but, you know? <laughs> I mean, I, I think the designers will be competent enough to ensure that bells are safe. Okay. Yeah. But still, it's a good just consideration. Just an comment. As an added comment, if I may interject, uh, we'll have to go through the City of El Paso Building Department inspection, and uh, we'll provide uh, documentation to the City of El Paso that the that the bells are safe and they can withstand, you know, 110 mile winds, things like that. Thank you very much. I'll Thank go ahead and me. second the motion, DG. All right, excellent. Thank you. Okay, so if there are no other comments to be made, let's put this to a vote. This is DJ and I vote yay. Vicky? Yay. Okay, thank you. Ivan? Yay. Okay, Francisco? Francisco, are you muted? I think he's muted, DJ. Okay, yeah, I don't see his video up, so I don't know if he's, if he has thumbs up or thumbs down. All right, well, I'll just can you continue going down. Um, Eddie? Yay. OK, excellent. And Paulina? Uh, respectfully, I'm going to vote no. OK, thank you. I um, understand. By the way, did you vote in a color? Yes. OK. It would, it's the dark tan color. Can you hear me now? DJ? No, yes, yes, yes. Francisco, I can hear I'm you. Okay. OK, great. Thank you. Thank you. OK. So that goes to five yeas and one nay. So the motion passes. Thank you again for coming to us and and thank you for providing another uh, presentation to get into more detail on your side of the, the process. So I really do appreciate it. Thank you guys for your time thank and consideration you. and uh, and for hearing this item today. All right. Thank you very much. Yes. Have a good evening. Thank you, DJ and commissioners. We uh, certainly appreciate it. Thank you, sir. All right, anytime. Thank you. Okay, let's move on to item number four. Item number four is a certificate of appropriateness for the property at 4427 Bliss Avenue. Located in the Austin Terrace Historic District, it is listed as non-contributing. It was constructed in 1961 and zoned R4H, which is residential historic. The certificate of appropriateness is for replacement of windows and painting of the facade after the fact. Now, um, this is the property. It's located in the Austin Terrace Historic District, and I'm going to mention the property across the street in just a few minutes. So as you can see, this is where it is. It's close to the corner. This is what it looked like when this picture was taken about 2000, maybe 2002, no later than that. As you can see, the brick was not painted and the windows appear to be original casement windows. So recently we had an application from the property owner for a new roof. And as is our custom, we asked for some photo documentation before we go ahead and decide. What we noticed is that the house has been painted and the windows were removed and replaced. We checked our system to see if a uh, permit had been pulled. None had been pulled whatsoever. No approvals were given. Um, so we spoke to the property owner and she said that, yes, yeah, she did have the building painted and she did have the windows replaced. She didn't think a permit was necessary. 
So what we said is we will approve the roof after this comes to the HLC and you know you either get approval or you have to take some action to take care of this. So we looked around the neighborhood and I'm pointing this house out because this may look a little familiar to you. This is across the street. Um, this one came in a few weeks ago because the owner wants to construct an addition in the back, a freestanding addition. But as you can see, the work had been done. So the house had been painted, a uh, new door had been installed, the wood shakes and the gable had been removed. And one of the conditions was that the property owner get approval for these things before we go ahead and approve a permit for new construction. Now, the difference between this house and the one you're seeing now is that this house was already painted at the time of designation. Properties that are painted at the time of designation get to keep that paint. We don't make property owners remove it. It's properties that are painted after designation um, without approvals that we sort of stop and say, no, we have to reassess this. So we looked at the neighborhood, as we said, and we saw this one certainly, but this came to HLC and there's some work to be done. And within some of the surrounding houses and see, as you can see in this one, the casement windows are still there. You know. So we're going to recommend the pool with modifications based on the following. The design guidelines for El Paso's historic district sites and properties recommend that if windows are damaged beyond repair, replacement windows should match the type, such as double hung, style, for example, six panes over six panes, and finish, meaning the paints. Yeah. Do not use single pane picture windows or horizontal sliding windows if they're not the original window types. Installation of windows similar to the original in appearance and structural purpose, regardless of construction materials, is permitted. Windows and secondary facades shall be reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis. When repair is not feasible, door and window products will be reviewed on an individual basis using the following criteria. A, architectural and historical compatibility, comparison to original profile, B, C, level of significance of original doors and windows, the architectural style of the building, D, three-dimensional exterior applied muntins that simulate or match the original muntins may be approved, and single-dimension interior applied muntins are not appropriate. It is not appropriate to install mechanical, oh, sorry, that, that was a typo. Painting or applying coatings such as cement or stucco to the exposed masonry slash stone is not appropriate because it will change the historic appearance of the masonry slash stone feature and can accelerate deterioration. Previously painted surfaces that were painted prior to destination with a permit may remain painted. It's not appropriate to paint brick, stone, copper, bronze, concrete, or cement block surfaces that were historically unpainted. The Secretary of the Interior Standards for Rehabilitation recommend that they, the historic character of a property, shall be retained and preserved. The removal of historic materials or alteration of features and spaces that characterize the property shall be avoided. And deteriorated historic features shall be repaired rather than replaced. Where the severity of deterioration requires the replacement of a distinctive feature, the new feature shall match the old in design, color, texture, and other visual qualities, and where possible materials. Replacement of missing features shall be substantiated by documentary, physical, or pictorial evidence. The modifications are to remove the paint from the main facade within 30 days, and to replace the windows on the main facade with new casement windows to match the originals within six months. And we're only asking for replacement on the main facade. If the owner slash applicant does not replace the windows within that timeline, no new permits will be issued until the existing windows on the main facade are replaced with windows that meet the guidelines stated above. All right, thank you, Provi. So I do have a question about the surface of the brick. Um, when you went to go visit, now I know you were only at, at sidewalk um, distance. Um, were you able to see if the brick had any sort of texture like, is it wired cut brick or any sort of rough texture on the exterior surface? You don't see anything? No, I don't think so. No, can't say that we noticed that, but here's the picture of it unpainted, TJ. Okay. Yeah, and I mean, just by this, um, I wouldn't be surprised if the brick had a little bit of texture to it, but not a great deal. Okay. Yeah, because that's a, uh, a big concern especially with mid-century buildings like this, you know, and I mean, what you could see from 15, 20 feet away is not much texture and right. being wire cut brick and there's an eighth of an inch, you know, vertically grooved, you mm -hmm. know, um, cuts in the exterior surface of the brick. So if the recommendation is to remove the paint, it would be very difficult to remove the paint from those grooves. So that's just my comment on the brick 
the paint removal. Um, mm -hmm. Do any other commissioners have questions? See the current Okay, if um, no other commissioners have comments or questions, is the property owner or building representative available? Ms. Cadena, are you there? Ms. Cadena, are you there? Well, star six to unmute yourself. You are here. Or DJ, if you'd like to give us a few minutes, we'll give her a call as well. Yeah, because I don't see any phone numbers on the participant list in the okay. meeting. Give us a few minutes. We're okay. going to go black and we'll give her a call. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Thank you. All right, sure. Okay, DJ, um, we do have the email that we sent out to the property owners and her email address is on there. We just tried calling the number and we got voicemail. So my suggestion is let's table this until the very end. We can try again later. Okay. And see if she calls in and okay. if she doesn't call in today, then we'll just table into the next meeting. Okay, understood. Okay. Yeah, thanks for following up. Um, sure. Yeah, in that case, I'd like to make a motion to table this to the end of the meeting. Second. Okay, thanks, Vicky. This is DJ, and I vote yay. Vicky? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Ivan? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Francisco? Francisco, I think you might be muted still. Okay, well, while you unmute yourself, Eddie? Eddie, are you there? I was muted, sorry. Yeah, oh, that's okay. Okay, thank you. And Paulina? Yay. Okay. Francisco, are you there? Okay. I'm going to put you down as not present. Okay, in that case, let's move on to the next item which is item number six. So item number six is the list of administrative reviews. So let's take some time to look through these reviews. And if any commissioners have questions or comments, then um, feel free to, to ask Provi, and then we'll bring it to a vote in a few minutes.
OK, if there are no questions or comments, I would like to approve these administrative reviews as stated. Second. OK, thanks, Vicki. This is DJ and I vote yay. Vicki. Yay. Thank you. Ivan. Yay. OK, thank you. Eddie. Yay. OK, Paulina. Yay. OK, and Francisco. OK, Francisco is still not present. OK, let's move on to the next item. Which is the review of meeting minutes from our February 8th meeting. So if any commissioners have edits that need to be pointed out, feel free to make note of them on the spot and bring them to Provi's attention. And then once we're all done, then we'll put it to a vote. OK, if there are no comments or questions regarding the minutes, I would like to make a motion to approve the minutes as stated.
This is Eddie. I can second the motion. OK, great. Thank you, Eddie. This is DJ and I vote yay. Vicky? Yay. OK, thank you. Ivan? Yay. Thank you. Eddie? Yay. OK, thank you. Paulina? Abstain. I was not present. OK, great. Thank you. And Francisco? OK, Francisco is not present. OK, moving on to item number nine. And let me just pull up the agenda real quick. Which is invitation to participate in the Section 106 process for Lower Beaumont. So because I am involved with this at Fort Bliss, I'm going to abstain from all conversation. All right, then. Thank you, DJ. Um, so commissioners, you are probably familiar with this project because we keep talking about it. Um, Fort Bliss has asked us to be a consulting party with regard to this project, which has to do with uh, acres that the city is leasing around the William Beaumont parcel, the lower Beaumont, if I'm correct. We had asked Fort Bliss to make a presentation and explain the project and what it is that we're required as a contributing party. Um, Fort Bliss recommended that we reach out to the Texas Historical Commission, which is the name of the State Historic Preservation Office, and ask them to guide us through a Section 106 review. And gratefully, well, um, we have Pam Opiella from the THC here to discuss that. So, Pam, are you still here with us? I'm here. Yes, Proby. Thank you. Um, <laughs> hi, Pam. Thank you. Thank you. So, would you like to explain to commissioners what this requires? What would be expected of us? What is the process? Okay. Um, well, first of all, we haven't received from Fort Bliss the new proposal, so um, I'm not sure exactly it, what it entails, but uh, we have some idea. Um, but for the Section 106 process, it is a, a federal regulatory review process, and the federal agency is, is uh, required to initiate this process um, and provide all information on the project. Um, and consulting parties, um, uh, what would normally happen is um, if someone wants to be a consulting party, they would request this from the federal agency, which is Fort Bliss, um, so that you could have, so that you would have the opportunity to receive information on the project and comment um, on it. Um, so um, let me just briefly um, just go over uh, a brief explanation of the Section 106 process, and I apologize that I'm not prepared to do a presentation right now. Our office was closed uh, last week um, due to the uh, weather disaster, shall we call it, <laughs> that we had. And um, so I just wanted to just give a brief explanation because the consulting parties are not involved in the complete process, but they're you do have the opportunity to comment. Um, so the Section 106 process is Section 106 of the National Historic Preservation Act, um, which requires that the federal agency, in this case, Fort Bliss, takes into account the effects of what they are doing on historic properties. Um, and we have already determined that there are historic properties that will be affected um, by this lease, I believe is what is going to be proposed, at least, and again, we haven't seen it but I understand there's going to be a lease of Lower Beaumont to the city of El Paso. Um, so um, our, uh, let's see, the Section 106 process seeks to accommodate historic preservation concerns with the needs of the federal uh, undertaking uh, through consultation among the agency officials and other parties with an interest in the effects of this undertaking on historic properties. So, this process requires that the federal agency consult um, with us, with tribes, and with other uh, consulting parties and the public. Um, so as for consulting parties and why um, they would like you to be involved is, I'm, I'm reading directly from the regulations here, the federal regulations. Um, it says certain individuals and organizations with a demonstrated interest in the undertaking may participate as consulting parties. Um, so that would be, for example, the city of El Paso, since they have a uh, economic and other uh, uh, relationship to this project. Um, but also it could be preservation um, groups. It says, uh, let's see, 
those that have concerns with the undertaking's effects on historic properties. Um, so it could be, it's, uh, could be, for example, Preservation Texas, uh, it could be the Historic Preservation Commission, um, it could be a number of, of groups that are interested in, in the effects on historic property um, in El Paso. Um, this, because this is a lease of, uh, it will likely be, again, we have not seen the, we have not gotten the proposal yet, but this will likely be a lease of property so that it is uh, in somewhat out of the control of the federal agency. Let me read what it says here. So it is considered what is called an adverse effect. And that means that uh, there's a lease of property out of federal control without adequate legal and legally enforceable restrictions or conditions to ensure long-term preservation of historic properties that are significant. Um, so because this is going to be a lease without protections of historic property, the 106 process is uh, likely going to terminate in us having a agreement document that will be negotiated between Fort Bliss and our office perhaps with tribes if they choose to be involved and um, and with consultation from his uh, the consulting parties. And so uh, likely, and, and I don't know if anyone from Fort Bliss is here to explain um, how they will go about this, but um, what will happen is uh, they'll they'll present the they'll they'll give us their proposal. They will likely give it to other consulting parties. Um, and um, when we start negotiating an agreement document, um, a draft of some sort will be sent, uh, probably, a, I don't know, probably maybe not the first draft or so, but some draft will be sent to consulting parties for their comment. Um, and consulting parties will um, go over the document and provide comments. Um, maybe ask for certain um, additions to be made to the uh, agreement document that will be worked out in order to make sure there are um, protections of the historic properties. Um, if any of the consulting parties or any group is, is asked to um, have a duty, if they're assigned a duty within that agreement document, uh, for example, let's say hypothetically, that the Historic Preservation Commission might be asked to review any of the uh, proposals from Fort Bliss, that may or may not be the case, then um, they would, uh, anyone that has a duty has to be uh, or should be asked to be a signatory to the agreement. Um, but in any case, the, the 106 process basically is the opportunity to uh, to participate in a discussion, comment um, with uh, the federal agency concerning um, a, whatever project, in this case, a lease of property, and to voice their concerns. So in a nutshell, that is, that's what it is. Thank you, Pam, and thank you for taking time out of your day to talk to uh, us about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will say about this project that um, it seems like we're in a unique position. This is an address to the commissioners in that we are um, a division of the city. We're part of planning. Um, we look at historic properties all day, but it's another division of the city, the capital improvements department that is actually leasing this space. Not to mention we have a consulting party member, uh, our vice chair, Vicki Hamilton, uh, who will also weigh in on this project. So I guess my question to the HLC is, <clears throat> do you want to be a part of this or don't you? I think this is as much information as we're going to get at the moment. Um, again, I'm not sure what kind of time commitment we're talking about. I can't imagine that we're gonna talk about this every week, um, but I don't know what else is required of us except weighing in every once in a while. As I said, it's a little unusual because we're one division of the city that's going to be weighing in on a proposal that another division of the city may be proposing. It makes it a little awkward is what I'm saying. So I don't know if you wanna think about this today, if you wanna come up with an answer and say, yes, we would like to be a consulting party or no, maybe we'll step away or you wanna give it just one more meeting. I think he 
can you share your opinion? My opinion? Yes. I, I don't. I, I was the one that raised the question of two, two portions of the city. And I should think that I, I was under the understanding that the, um, the lead in the lease was, is, was a, by default a, a consulting party and that uh, the historic commission would be a consultant to them in any case. Uh, I, the fact that Cam just brought up the fact that the commission might take a part in the whatever programmatic agreement they had, what uh, was decided upon, and might you know, be required. Uh, it might be might streamline some things for the city if the historic preservation officer uh, reviewed some portions of the project. But I, I, you know, I think this, this project is getting more complicated than it really is. I'm a little bit confused because uh, I was under the understanding that Fort Bliss was consulting under their integrated cultural resources management plan. Uh, and now it appears that they've included, the, that the council is included, so it's a separate Section 106. Um, and I don't know what, I, I have sent a letter, just full disclosure, I've sent a letter asking for lists. This was prior to the uh, presentation at our last meeting. I sent a letter to Fort Bliss asking them to define the entire project because it's a large piece of land and what their their plans were for it and Fort Bliss has not yet responded so the most I know about the project at this point in time about the which actually was very rel was good news uh was the plan that was presented at the last meeting so this may not be that complex at all uh there is one building there that Fort Bliss publicly made a commitment to retaining because of the mural inside of the building. Mural is what makes the um, the, the the building significant and eligible for the National Register. And the Army does not go beyond eligibility generally, uh, so it'll be adding another dimension of confusion to the city's life since they're trying to understand uh, the role of a National Register District. But the, the federal law requires consultation for anything that's eligible for the National Register. And the reason that the Army doesn't put things on the National Register is they simply don't, since their obligations are the same, they don't want to pay for the additional nomination. Uh, so my feeling is I I do not know how we would function except for as advisory to the other portions of the city. Is that what your understanding was, Provi? Uh, well, <laughs> it's, it's, I would imagine it would be unusual for two organizations within one organization to separately be consulting parties on yes a, yes uh, and i would think that you guys would want to consult with each other as a part of the city and and decide how you were going to do that well it, like i said it's a very unusual situation um, and the reason that CID doesn't consult with us on this is because this is not a locally designated area. It's just that simple. This is why the HLC has never been involved before. Uh, the only reason we've been asked to be involved is because we're one of several consulting parties um, in, within the city. But it is an unusual situation to be in um, because, again, what if we are asked to weigh in on something that CID has already developed and gotten very far with, and the HLC says, well, no, we're not crazy about this. 
Um, I don't feel comfortable anymore, honestly, recommending that we become a consulting party. I prefer that we not, honestly, at this point. Um, we haven't gotten a whole lot of information. Um, there are many questions with regard to this project, and honestly, as the HLC goes, we have a lot to do. There's plenty for us to do and keep us busy. One, I think that one of the reasons that Forbes is probably asking you to participate and assist another department of the city or and or assist another department of the city is for bliss um decide thought they were they get they spent the money that they might have spent restoring the uh the mural on some uh photography that's normally used for archaeology and it, you know, had, they had some idea, and so they spent a good deal of money, and what they would like to do is uh, essentially have both parties, I, I think everybody would like to have both parties uh, spend only the money that reasonably needs to be done uh, to meet the expectations of what the other consulting parties are, which is the... Uh, preservation of the bureau and a, a sympathetic treatment, if not preservation of the Arroyo. It's, it looks like it'll be a very good, um, very positive uh, project for the city and particularly for that part of the city. The, the recreation opportunities that are going to be provided are good. Uh, if, if the plan that we were shown the last time holds they're keeping the fire department projects in an area that's not particularly historically significant and it's it's very low impact so if the agreement document that they eventually get to limits development of the property to what Mr. DeMuro showed us the last time uh, I'm not sure this is that hard a project, but there was, yeah, there were concerns because uh, the consultation was ongoing. There had been meetings with the different um, the different groups that uh, a telephone meeting with the different groups that Fort Bliss had committed to consulting with in their integrated cultural resources plan, but only after. Uh, the project down the hill with the um, school district was carried out uh, without consulting any interested parties in the city. So that's where we were. And at the time that we, uh, that the, uh, the group that told me about the project downtown, uh, they had understood that they were planning to demo demolish the building and, and, the photographs were all that was going to be left. And just a little background: the, the artist is a, is a um, contemporary of Tom Lee, who who uh, painted during World War II. But he's quite different in that he was in the army. He started out his army career here. He painted this mural. This is the largest uh, piece of work that he did. Uh, and but then he was a part of the Army Art um, project as a soldier, deployed to North Africa. Have there are a lot of uh, drawings of his there when they dissolved the Army Art thing because it would, had become um, it, it would it had been taken over by people like that like the magazines that Tom Lee worked for. Uh, he stayed in the Army and he continued in the army until the end of the army and uh because he had started out as an austrian and who taken american citizenship he went behind enemy lines he was a part of the the beginning of the cia uh he was in the first concentration camp in germany before he came to the united states he, it was just a quite colorful person so he's a, a contemporary of Tom Lee that shows a different dimension of art during World War II. And the, one of the significances of this particular mural is it shows a completely integrated United States 
at the time. So it's got a soldier and a sailor of, of two different races and in the it's protecting and uh, defending the United American citizens who are holding up the center of it. And it shows uh, African Americans, uh, Asians, Hispanics, and Anglos in um, unexpected roles, an unexpected group of roles uh, in, in, in who's professionals and non professionals. So, so it's kind of a very El Paso painting, and it was a gift that he did before he left. He had been doing drawing when his superiors recognized his um, his ability and got him in the Army Art Corps. And he, is, he has paintings uh, that are hanging in the Medical Museum in San Antonio. I guess that's enough. The Arroyo is was is quite an interesting thing, and we were uh, it was still being evaluated to see how how extensive it was, but it was noted as the garden spot of El Paso, and many people have brought up that there are most of the archives have photographs of of that of the Arroyo Garden that went with the uh, hospital. Well, thank you for that, Vicki. Thank you. Commissioner, do you have any questions at the moment? Roby, I guess, um, how about the capital improvements district? I mean, uh, do they have a, an opinion on, you know, do they feel the HLC would help, you know, in, in this process? Uh, we can certainly ask. Mr. Demure, are you there? Yes, ma'am, I am. Um, if you would introduce yourself and this is Jerry Demuro. I'm the assistant director of capital improvement, and I've been part of this project since the day I got here in February 2019. <clears throat> um, like like Proby says, it, it, it's difficult if the HLC is a consulting party because they may have a, an opinion contrary to what CID is putting forth. My my preference is to have the support of Prodi's team and the HLC in ensuring our recommendations make sense. Uh, we fully intend to sign the programmatic agreement. That's going to be on us. Uh, Ms. Hamilton, I was very surprised to say that the Army is retaining Building 7167 because that is not what I've been told. Uh, so. Uh, sorry, sorry. There's a lot of interruptions. There's a lot of background noise. If people mm -hmm. aren't speaking, they should mute and that'll help. So what I was saying is I was quite surprised, Ms. Hamilton, that uh, you have indication that the Army is is retaining Building 7167. And that is not what's, what the city has been made aware of. Uh, the city has been told they will retain, they will maintain uh, Building 7167 and conditions associated with the mural. I, I think that I meant not demolish it. Oh, okay. Yes, that 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 is absolutely correct. And yes, would be the uh, custodian of it, guardian of it, right? Whatever. Okay. Okay. Thank is you. Correct. Is that your understanding? Uh, it's our understanding that once it's turned over, we would ensure that it's maintained in a condition of good repair. We have not identified a use for the building. It is suited for offices. We don't anticipate uh, construction to begin until the earliest 2024. So between now and then, things may change. And so we're not ready to commit to a, a use of the building, but we are committed to ensuring it's maintained. Our preference is that it be turned over to us, however, in a state of good repair, which it currently is not. Uh, that would be a part of your negotiations with Fort Bliss then? Correct. Mm -hmm. um, yes. It's in dire need of roof repair. Yes. And the the concerns of other consulting parties were primarily that it uh, it be retained in such a way that it doesn't damage the mural, and that there is occasional um, public access to the mural. So, Correct. Uh, so that Some of the could be a conference room or something like that. Right. One of the ideas we had was sort of like a community center 
and the district uh, representative may have a satellite office there, but it, it, it would not be totally converted to, to something other than what it's, is suited for now, because it did go through an interior renovation. I don't know when, but it was last occupied as offices up until June of 2019. It has been proposed, uh, it, it has gone through in the last 20 years, probably six different uses, including a blood bank and other uses. Uh, plus it was uh, convenient to the hospital. Yeah. And and I, I think the community foundation has suggested that the city consider it for some, its veterans project. Okay. Well, I think based, I, I, based on the conversations, um, I would make a motion to deny the invitation to participate in section 106. Lower Beaumont parcel. Anybody wants to second that? I would this, that? this is Paulina, I second. I would request you consider an amendment to that saying that you uh, that you would offer um, assistance to the um, capital improvement folks. As they okay. go through this project on the uh, the historic areas. If yes, they I would request like it. If they request it. Yes. Uh, I would like to make an amendment to that to that motion, just by saying that um, um, if you can add to say that uh, any request, if CID would request assistance from uh, the HLC. Um, during this process, uh, that would be welcome. Would we need to re second that again? Second. This is Paulina, I second. All right, I'll go one by one. This is Ivan, I say yay. Vicky? I um I'll abstain. Paulina. Please unmute yourselves. Yay. Eddie. Yay. Francisco. Not present. All right. Thank you very much. So we had three abstentions, or not three, sorry, three nays or yays. Um, and one abstention. One abstention. So, um, Russell, does this pass? Yes. Vicki, why are you abstaining? Vicki, unmute yourself. Unmute yourself, Vicki. I'm sorry, I was trying to be good. Uh, I, I, I can change it to a yay if that helps the process. I'm, I'm conflicted on the answer oh, because okay. I like a commitment from, uh, no worries. From um, yes, it passes. Huh? No worries. That's fine. No, no well, the reason is I like more of a commitment for the two departments of the city to work together. And that, that seems to be missing. If I can chime in, this is Jerry DeMuro again. Um, where we are in the stage of this project is we are awaiting uh, Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Army approval of the concept. To get that approval, we moved to 30% design. We did not identify mitigation measures in the 30% design. Um, the, the approval from DASA, Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Army, is likely to take six months. And what they were waiting on from the city is memorandum draft memorandums of agreement that the city would maintain the recreational facilities and that we would provide MWR uh, prioritization of the record uses for the recreational facility. Those have been drafted and are ready to submit to Fort Bliss, so we should be submitting the concept 
uh, for approval in short order. And in, in about six months, we'll we'll figure out um, uh, whether it's approved. At the same time, we intend to initiate or Fort Bliss intends to initiate formal consultation so we can begin to discuss amongst the team and seek the support of the HLC and Proby's team in helping to guide us to a, a suitable solution that everybody feels comfortable with. Thank you very much, Mr. Demuro. All right, so do we proceed to the next item, Provi? Um, I believe we do. So, um, DJ? D DJ yes. can come back. Yes. <laughs> yes, you can come back. You can come back, DJ. It's, okay, it's great. Back to the room. Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, thank you, thank everybody. You, everyone. I'm, I'm going to sign off. Thank you very much. Thank all you. Right. Thank you, thank you thank Mr. You. Um, and I'm going to sign off also. Thank okay. you for inviting me. Thank you, Pam. Thank you. thank you very much, Pam. Okay. Are you holding your breath all this time, DJ? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I was breathing. It's okay. Um, so when I was reading the agenda, I accidentally skipped through item number eight. Um, what we just discussed was item number nine. So I apologize for that. Um, so let's just go back and take a quick look at item number eight, the true nine, item number eight, which is discussion and action on amendments to chapter 2020. Um, so on that note, I'd just like to thank Ross for um, providing the presentation to City Council last week. Um, for anybody who's not aware, Russ provided a good presentation to City Council on, I guess, the specifics of Chapter 2020 and how it operates. So, um, Russ, thank you again for, I guess, clearing up the waters. And um, just, uh, I mean, I do have a question on that, but Provi, do you have anything to cover before I... Um what I would say about this item is that the city has asked us to go back and do some more outreach. Okay. Uh, that means probably going back to the neighborhood associations and asking them to weigh in again um, on the changes and the revisions. So we're not going to see this going to city council soon because we've got to do a little more outreach. So it's going to be a little while. This will be on our agenda for a little while longer. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. I didn't Thanks. follow the, the entire council meeting, but it did seem like some of the councilmen were not aware that the HOC has been working on this process for a while. And it it, it seemed like it, there was confusion that, you know, this process just started because of the National Register uh, item. And so I don't know if there's a way that we can help, you know, to clarify that so that everybody's on the same page. Do you think there's anything we can do, Proby? Um, it's something we can ask, Ivan, okay, about maybe approaching city council representatives and trying to explain this a little further. Okay. Um, besides, when before we take this to city council, we would be speaking with the representatives just to inform them um, that this is ready to go forward and exactly what it is. Uh, I believe we did this um, not in 2020, but actually in late 2019. So going back and refreshing their memories would be a good idea. Okay. Would it be good that the HLC communicate this during public comment there at the council meeting? Well, I don't know if the HLC can, but I think that you as individual um, residents and property owners in the city of El Paso can. I don't know that you can mm -hmm. speak on behalf of the HLC necessarily, unless the HLC makes a motion. Okay. I mean, one of the things that Russ pointed out was the difference between the review that the HLC does and tax credit reviews. One thing when you meet with the um, representatives, their constituents seem to be confused. Those that have gone through tax credit reviews probably think that all of the, that the city reviews are as stringent as the tax credit reviews. And from reviewing some of the tax credit reviews and then seeing how flexible this body is, I don't think there's any comparison in what, I think they're comparing apples and oranges and their constituents are probably confused mm -hmm. about 
how much would be required of them. And Russell, we so just what Proby said, we would be able to present ourselves as a citizen, but not not as a uh, committee, right? Commission. Sure. Yeah, I think you could do that. Um, so, good evening, um, Mr. Chairman and board members. Uh, this is Philip Etuwe, Planning and Inspection. Um, I'm not sure if you guys recall the vote that was taken by City Council. I think it was pretty clear that the City Council as a whole wanted staff to go back and do more outreach. So that was the vote. That was the um, um, the decision that was taken by City Council. I appreciate you guys trying to reach out to City Council, but I think that uh, decision to go back and do uh, more outreach was um uh, the final decision by city council, and that's what uh, the city manager's um, city manager direction is. All right. Thank you, sir. Yes, thank you for that clarification. OK. Um, now I do have a quick question for Russ. Um, now during your presentation, you noted that our purview only affects H overlay properties. Mm -hmm. um, now, in previous years, uh, the legal counsel m made it aware that the ordinance allows us to, or uh, permits us, the HLC, to monitor undertakings that are not H overlay but are listed in the National Register or the state registers. So like a section 106 process. No, I'm, I'm talking about the review process that we do here, you know, to seek certificates of appropriateness. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, that's what we've been operating under since your predecessor worked with us when we were revising the, the ordinance back in 2018. So um, it's a bit of a departure from what we were told before. Now, granted, I mean, the, the majority of the commission is, has changed since we made those last revisions. But um, I mean, that is the reason why we, you know, made the recommendation to omit, I, guess, I think it's section A1 from chapter 2020.080. So, um, just to be clear, like that, based on your interpretation of it, that that isn't necessary. Is that correct? You know, we'll have to see and we'll go through outreach, like Philip said, and, you know, see what we come up with. I think there's there's multiple ways to clarify and update the code. And, you know, I don't want to say what is the best way to do it, because I think there's probably different ways. And so that's where I'd, um, you know, kind of start with there is, um, is going through and, you know, um, doing some more outreach and some more um, work with staff and seeing, you know, what other cities do and how best we can um, improve the code. Right. Okay. Yeah, if anything, I'm just trying to make sure we're all on the same page, you know, so, um, but that's okay. Thank you again for, for taking the time to present to city council, because it was a good presentation. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, anytime. Okay, Thank you. so. Thank you, Russell. Yes. So it doesn't sound like there's any action that's needed on our part, correct? I don't okay. think so, no. Okay, great. Well, I'm glad we were able to. Russell, yeah. if he's if Russ is saying that there are different approaches to it, I mean, the draft that he's making for public outreach now has a certain approach. Yeah, doesn't that need to be resolved before you start another round of public outreach so that we don't have confusion? I think that's something staff can look at and work at um, with staff and we can 
provide you an update on that at the next at the next meeting. I, I think that I mean my observation is I think there's some people that are um, trying to assist in more confusion, and I would hope that we had we were organized and had a, a decision before we went to the different neighborhood groups again. A recommendation, uh, at least a recommendation, or laid out the alternatives and what the impacts of the different alternatives would be. I just don't want somebody to hear some words that, you know, nobody understood to mean something and, and try to use it for some other purposes, which is what sure. I think is happening now. Sure. Yeah, I think that's, you know, that that's exactly why council wants us to go back and really do a, you know, a, a thorough review and, you know, outreach and see what, um, see what the community wants and, um, you know, do a lot of benchmarking across the state of Texas and maybe other states to see, you know, best practices and things like that. And just, you know, so when we bring it forward, we have a, um, you know, a very complete document. There's no issues with it. All right, understood. That makes sense to me. Um, do any other commissioners have last minute comments or questions before we move on? OK, if there's nothing else, let's move on to um, item number 10. Okay. All right, so um, commissioners, item number 10 is nomination and election of a new chairman um, because DJ's term expires on March 9th. Uh, that is the end of his second term, so he's reached his term limit, which means he cannot serve again. So at this point, we will have to elect a new chair to serve in his place. Um, and now normally we don't wax poetic here. You know, we thank you very much for your services. We're deeply, deeply grateful for what you do. But in this case, honestly, we can say that DJ really has just gone above and beyond this chair. Um, I've been here 10 years and DJ is the most active chair we've had. So we're really, really going to miss you, DJ. Mm -hmm. um, so the question is, who can take DJ's place? You know, who can be the chair which will not only direct the meetings, but someone who will put in the effort that DJ has? Because honestly, DJ, you've just raised the bar. You know, after Thank this, you. you know, yeah, if someone comes in and doesn't do half of what you do, it's going to be very, very disappointing. Oh, no. So, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who would like DJ, to. Does your, does your term end completely? Like, there's no, you won't stay on the, on the board, right? Yeah, that's it. That's yeah. it. Oh, wow. That's yeah. it. So we'll have to wait another two years before we can ask him to come back. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So, yeah. Um, if you like to give this some thought, please go ahead. But, you know, think about the commitment now, you know, um, as chair, we really do expect you to show up. You would have to direct the meeting. You would have to sit out the entire thing. And of course, we would ask you for your input uh, with regard to some projects. You know, DJ and I have a nice rapport when I have some questions about some items or about, you know, some proposals that come across my desk. It's not unusual for me to reach out to DJ and say, have you seen something like this before? You know, or can you recommend a product? Have you seen X, Y, and Z? Um, so again, the next chair basically has to honor the commitment that you've made, which is to show up, you know, every two weeks and hold a meeting. But we also would love to have a chair who can add in a little more effort, um, just like your predecessor, meaning DJ. So you don't have to elect someone today. I said this is just notice that our next meeting March 8th will be the last one that DJ can attend as chair or as a member of the HLC. So wow. think about who would like to step up and take his place and stand in those shoes. Yeah well thank you very much Provi you know um, it's been quite an interesting four years or so and um, I just want to say that you know leaving this commission is is going to be bittersweet because I'll miss it but at the same time, you know, th this commission has, is filled with such, y y you guys are such great colleagues, you know, and I could not be doing this if it wasn't for, for you. So I really do thank everyone here for your, um, your input, for your questions, for your engagement, because we work as a team, you know, that's the key thing. So, and, and we're, we're certainly doing that, 
So um, thank you again. And, you know, I'll be there next time on the 8th. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, just think about it. And if anybody wants to reach out to me about, you know, learning more about, you know, commitments or anything like that, I mean, feel free. I mean, I'm, I'm happy to provide more details on what it takes. Um, and honestly, I'm not leaving my shoes behind. You know, I'm, I'm happy with somebody else with a different pair of shoes to come in. So, um, you know, just thanks again. And um, we'll talk about it more next meeting. So. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. So, thanks. Thank you very much, DJ. Thank you. Hey. Hey. I'll say my goodbyes next on the next meeting, not, not, not this one. Too early. Thanks, I <laughs> <laughs> Hey, there's still plenty of time to do that. Go for that. Yeah. But, um, okay. Oh, great. Well, thanks again. Um, and since uh, is there any there isn't any action on this yet, right? That's for next time. Exactly, it's for next okay. time. It's just okay. put it out there. Yeah, exactly. give it some thought. You know, who you'd like to see lead the landmark commission next? You know. Yeah. So, okay. Something to think about, and something we don't want to just spring on you at the next meeting. Right. Yeah. No. Definitely take some time to think about it. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, do any commissioners have questions or any other comments on, on this item? If not, it doesn't sound like it. If not, then we can move back to item number four. Okay, DJ, we've reached out again. Um, we've left a voicemail. You know, we did send in an email to the property owners and representatives, and we're not sure what happened. Um, so. I think we just have to table this for the next meeting. We'll reach out to the owner again tomorrow, be a little more aggressive about it, see if we get there a little earlier, and just let her know that because she didn't show up, we couldn't really discuss okay. it, at least not very thoroughly. Yeah, no, I, I certainly agree. Okay, sounds good. Thanks for um, continuing to follow up and providing an update. Um, on that, yes, pro oh, sorry. Could you get her to tell you what the texture of the brick is? Texture of the brick. Okay. Yes. Know what the texture of the brick is and whether it really is good um, for cleaning. Mm. What was the age of the building? Let's see. The building was constructed. Looks like 1961. Oh, okay. But by then, yeah, by then the it. The brick in El Paso was hard enough to withstand cleaning. Some of the earlier, you can't. So. Yeah, that's a good point. Good yeah. yeah. Good okay. Well, on that note, I'd like to table this item, um, item number four, for the next HLC meeting on the 8th of March. I'll second. Okay, thanks, Ivan. This is DJ, and I vote yay. Vicky? Yay. Okay, thank you. Ivan? Yay. Okay, Eddie? Yay. Great, thank you. Paulina? Paulina, unmute yourself, yay. please. There. Okay, okay, thank you. Yay. And Francisco? Uh, looks like he left. Ah, he's gone. Okay. All right, in that case, gone. All right, well, that takes care of that. And yeah, the only thing left is to adjourn today's meeting, um, unless if any other commissioners have last minute comments, but um, if there are, now's the time to talk about them. Okay, if there's nothing, then let's adjourn today's meeting. So I'd like to make a, mission, or a, a motion to adjourn today's meeting. Second. Okay, thank you. Um, and Let's just do a whole roll call type thing. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Aye. 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 Okay. Any nays, abstentions? Doesn't sound like it. Okay. In that case, the meeting is adjourned for today. Um, thank you again. Meeting adjourned at 6.08 p.m. Um, really do appreciate your comments, and we will convene on the 8th of March. So. Excellent. Thank you, yeah. Commissioner. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. See you in a few weeks. Yep. Have a good night. Good, good night. night.